Hey everybody, welcome to the Hit or Die podcast, episode 81, uh, 2020 World Series, volume 3. Uh, we're going to have some more guests call in, uh, some more fans and supporters that want to be a part of the show today. Um, just quick, uh, you can follow us on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and get us on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, any of your podcast apps. Jake's got some more info. Yeah, on, no, uh, I, I just, I got into more of the analytics over the weekend because i haven't really information spent, yeah yeah there you go for the show <laughs> and because i hadn't really dived into it yet um or a lot of it anyways and because there's so much stuff man there's between the youtube and all all the the podcast networks it's it pointed at and uh yeah iheart radio was like a big one that i i never would have thought but uh what i noticed was you know and I told Chad we just we wanted to thank our audience. Um, it's crazy how far uh, this thing goes. You don't really notice it or or know. And uh, you know, obviously Fresno um, is one of our biggest uh, areas that listens. But Sacramento was number two, uh, and then Fres our Clovis Madera were tied. And uh, the Central Valley was forty percent, forty five percent of the audience. And uh, another 40% was out of the state of California. So for everybody that's listening elsewhere, thank you. Um, that's awesome. It was, it was cool to see. I mean, Not in, only in the States. Yeah. So, yeah, 26 different countries. It was nuts. You know, Russia, uh, the U.K., um, Australia, Canada, Mexico. Uh, it's uh, nearly 30% of the audience uh, is not in California. So that was pretty cool to see. And we just we appreciate everybody that listens and shares and supports and you know, it uh, it was awesome. It just kind of opened my eyes, and I, you know, just thought we got to say thank you to everybody that that listens and, and supports what we're doing. And and uh, it was just it was cool. You know, San Leandro, Palo Alto, Brentwood, just a lot of areas where you're not, you know, you just don't know. And uh, it it was cool, really cool to see. So uh, so thank you all very much for for supporting what we're doing. We really appreciate that. Yep. Uh, shout out also to CVC uh, Baseball and Shane Marshall. Uh, they were. I think the only program I've seen do a Halloween game. Well, a lot, not a lot of programs can do. No, what but I know like doing. Emmanuel. Like they're playing baseball. I think so. Emmanuel's back in school. It's all. I think Memorial. I mean, all the private schools. But I don't know if I don't know if San Joaquin or, or uh, Emmanuel. I don't know what they're athletically able to do. Yeah. I don't either. That's why I was kind of. It was like odd. Fresno Christian. I think's going back to school also. But who's playing baseball? That's yeah, what I'm I, saying. Yeah. It's weird that. Nothing at CBC, but they're playing baseball. They are allowed to play baseball. Yeah. That's how it was. Just cool to see <laughs> costumes, and you know, you know, we always have fun with our our Halloween game. But uh, yeah, I wanted to shout those guys out, and uh, yeah, a lot of stuff to get into today. Uh, mainly, it's all World Series talk. We're gonna get a couple callers that hit us up that uh, wanted to join with us, and uh, with that, we'll go right into Game Three. Pretty uneventful. Uh, you know, you had a. Bueller went, I think, six, seven, 10 Ks uh, to one walk, I think three hits. Uh, Morton wasn't great, struggled a bit, four and a third, five earned. His ball was up, and I think the Dodgers ended up winning six to two final. But we saw something that we hadn't, you just don't see, and we've always, we've talked a lot about playoff baseball. You know, you see a, a, a well, a, not a, maybe not a perfectly executed, but an executed safety squeeze. Uh, I think to get their fourth run of that game home, and you just don't see that not even during the regular season all that much. No, um, and it's just it goes to show you when it matters that baseball is played the right way. Like you're going to play small ball. I mean, we haven't seen guys steal bases like this all season either, or you know, try to manufacture runs. I guess that's what we talk about is manufacturing runs because you have to win the game. It's, um, you got to do things that are fundamentally what you're taught growing up and how to play the game of baseball. So it's nice to see that in this era of guys throwing Ched and guys hitting home runs that they're still executing, you know, other ways to win games. I mean, if you look at the video, right, and you're looking <clears> at this bunt, you know, Barnes does the right thing, and obviously you're bunting the strike. It's not suicide, right? So we still got to get a strike. Um, bunts a strike. 
I think Betts was on third here, and he's you know he gets it. You don't see it off the video initially, but he gets a fairly good lead as off as, as far as a third baseman. And I just don't like, you know, how Barnes maybe gives up a little too much of the plate. Um, but I mean, the pitch that was thrown was perfect to bunt to first base where you uh, want to bunt. Bellinger scored. It was a Bellinger scored. Yeah. But I guess my thing is too is like okay, he just showed and then took. Where why are the Corners not doing more thinking about that situation. Um, I know if I was playing first, and I did play first base, but if, if I see a guy, you know, go for a safety squeeze and then and pulls back for a ball, I'm going to actually move up probably another yeah. three or four steps. Um, Are you doing that late, though? I mean, because it's hard to move. You know, I, don't, I know with a drag bun, a lot of guys will start back, shuffle their feet. Oh, the and, safety and move squeeze, toward- it's... I'm gonna move up for two to four steps, it's, just in case. And then if I see it, then I'm gonna go. Right, and it's, it's essentially a sack bunt, right? You're, yeah. you're not you're you're not trying to be safe at first. Your job is to get the bunt down and score yeah. a run. But you also, so I'd rather the, give I'd rather give up the runner going to second and keep the runner at third. You know what I mean as a, as a defense. So I would have, you know, I feel like the corner should have crashed a little bit better because he bunted that pretty hard. Yeah. Towards the first base, so if I'm if I'm a little four steps on the grass, almost like a, a first and second type yeah. play where you'd be normally, and then crash when he gets ready to because he showed it early enough that you know to crash. Yeah, I think it was. I mean, it was it was he. It, I thought Barnes did a pretty good job with it. Um, yeah, no, he did. But I'm just saying there was still time where they could have crashed and tried to make a play at home uh, because. The guy on third's not running. It's not a. It's not a squeeze. It's a safety squeeze. Right. I just so think the first baseman's waiting as long as possible. That's why you show as late as possible because you can't just vacate first base yeah. or they're going to take off on you. Yeah. And you can't thirty one move anymore. No. So, um, I just thought he gave up a little too much plate. Um, you know, and, and we always teach our guys up in the box as much as possible so that you take away some foul territory. Um, but I mean, if you do that, you know. Teams are going to notice. Well, he's up in the box and on the plate, <laughs> kind of gives away what's ha- about to happen. So, but he, other than that, I mean, it was it was nice to see, uh, you know, a little small ball stuff that you see in the college game a lot, definitely in the high school game a lot, uh, work and and you know give. I mean, all runs are, are at a premium, and you, the more you can get, the better, obviously. So, yeah. and the Rays showed no sign of quitting, so every run you can get is huge. Uh, but the Rays go down in game three. Um, and then game four was just, it was a nail biter all the way through. Uh, I think both teams scored runs for four innings straight. Those middle innings at four straight runs scored. It was kind of a bullpen esque game for the Dodgers. I don't think they wanted to go that route, but, um, I mean, we can just get into it. Um, you know, the ninth inning was. I, I, my jaw dropped, right? Yeah. And I posted a couple things of that. <clears throat> uh, what was your take when you saw it? Like, because I was speechless. Uh, it's definitely something that I've never seen before. Uh, I've been in a lot of walk off games, a lot of crucial, important games, um, adrenaline type games. So I know that part of it as a player, like just being in that situation, the. Um, not nerve wracking, but it puts a little added pressure on you, um, the adrenaline and the situation. So I thought it was crazy. Um, you know, a lot of people don't understand these guys are human beings. Yeah, they're big leaguers. Um, they're going to make mistakes. It happens. Um, not a lot of people were talking about, you know, Kaylee Jan- That was a great pitch. Like, you can't, Kaylee Jansen sawed him off and got, like, did what he was supposed to do. It was a great pitch. It was a better, you know, battle to hit the ball. Um, but where was he? He didn't back up home. Does it play a factor? Maybe, maybe not. We'll never know. I mean, looking at the replay, and, I mean, we can look at it right here. Like, I don't think it does, right? Because where he's supposed to be. Well, the where ball, the throw is, he's supposed to be. So, right, so Taylor boots it here, and muncie has got to cut this ball. See off. that? Yeah, it's going here. Yeah, so t- see where, it takes see where, Will Smith away from the plate. So now he's he's trying to get back to the plate because he doesn't know that a Rosarito not a, fell. Yes, right. He doesn't know. So he's trying to get back. Muncy's trying to throw to a guy on the run like a quarterback. 
and he doesn't lead him properly. But I mean, Muncie has to cr- cut that ball off, right? He had it's, to, yes, because it would take Smith too far away from the plate. Assuming a Rosarena didn't fall, exactly, he'd have been safe. So and he, you have to assume that because he doesn't know. So Jansen would be lined up technically behind the catcher in line with Muncie, and the ball goes to the first base side of the dugout. There's no way he's going to get there in time to make a play at the plate. So I don't think if he backs it up, uh, who knows? I mean, you're right. No, I mean, you don't know. You don't know. You know, so you'll never know. Um, It was a crazy play. Um, But again, you guys, a lot of people out there aren't. They're just like getting mad at the Dodgers Dodgers. and, and... Dude, the Rays are a big league yes, team. They they're have not big leaguers on their on their roster. They're not in the World Series. They didn't just say, "Oh, you guys get to go to the World Series and play the Dodgers." They're they, the number one team in the American League. They, and nobody's giving them any credit. No, they're not. It's like, oh, Robertson done this, or you know, Baez and Kenley Jansen. I mean, I heard Kenley Jansen is getting death threats of for himself and his children. Yeah, like guys, it's a baseball. It's a game. It's it's a game. It's not that important for you as a fan. And I get you want to be invested in your team and, you know, win a World Series, but these guys are human beings. You can't expect them to be perfect all the time. It's just it's not possible. Well, in the one hit he gave up in the in the ninth, the, the Kiermaier was a shattered bat. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he walked the next guy. Rosarina. Uh, but going and maybe – see, what I didn't see is in game three – he gave up a home run to a Rosarena, but nobody, nobody was talking because the game ended. Dodgers won. Nobody said a thing. Yeah. But he gave up a home run in the ninth or eighth, yeah, ninth to Rosarena. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't see anything on that. No, because they won. So I saw Taylor was and and I I saw some specific things. You know, Taylor's trash. Jansen's a bum. They played like a bunch of kids, a little league team. And literally not one person I know, there's maybe a handful of you guys that I know that could do that. They could play or could have played at that level. Yeah, it's not easy. There's a reason why it's the hardest game to play. I mean, every guy's coming out of the pin throwing 100 miles an hour, which I still think isn't true. I think that the guns are a little bit... You think so? Juice. Oh, yeah. I think they're juice. That's just not... <laughs> It's that many guys. It's just I don't know. They're juiced a little. Everything's juiced in the big leagues to make everything look better. But these guys are human. Like, and then somebody said something the way Roberts reacted. It's like that's an initial human reaction. Like you're so mad that you guys lost. Like the reaction. But guess what? He probably when they got in the dugout or locker room were like, "Hey, we're okay. We'll pick our heads up." You know, he was a manager. But in that moment, as a human being, your first reaction is going to be a negative. Re- it's just that's yeah. that's part of being a yeah, human I think, being. Yeah, I think finding a way to make it a, a coachable moment or, you know, be, make it, you know, just being positive. Obviously, these guys are big. But leaders. I'm telling you, they didn't. It's not a coachable moment. No, for it, was, it was a because fluke they're, play. Because they're big leaguers. Yeah, it's a fluke. That doesn't happen. No, I, I don't know if. How many of those guys rely on him to rally them together? It's not like uh, the outfield coach went, hey, Chris Taylor, you should have done this. Or, <laughs> hey, hey, Muncie, but you should have thrown the ball better. You know, it, it's like, hey, off okay, the bat, shake it off. off. He went at it like a, like a do or die type play. But I and, think he was trying to keep a Rosarina at second. Which they're, all, they're, they're going on contact. There's no, two outs. They're, they're, he's not stopping. And it went in his glove. Yeah, it just, fl- it just flew out down. when he was coming up. So... But yes, you're right. You when we talked earlier, <clears throat> you said he probably should have just played it as a single and just got the ball in the second. Or at least hit Muncie. Just don't worry about you're not getting Kiermeyer. Off the bat, no. there's two outs. He's Game's scoring. Tied. They're tied. going on contact. Doesn't matter if it's in the air or not. They're not freezing on a line. And you know, Rose Reina is gonna do the same thing. And he's fast and the ball wasn't hit hard. So he's probably getting a third. And it was away it was taking him towards the gap a little bit. It was yeah. it was it was in, but it was away from third base. Mm. Just hit your cut. Yeah, lived. You tied up the game. Okay, so what? Yeah, you keep the double play in order. You know, ground ball gets you out of it. Um, but it's baseball, man. It's like nobody was calling Barnes trash, or I'm sorry, uh, Taylor trash. We had a home run the other night. No, I don't. That's the stuff that bothers me. It bothers me too because 
I mean, fans the, but the fans same, the same brutal, man. <laughs> again, the same people are going to celebrate yeah. if they win the World Series. It yep. just, I don't know. It bothers me. Yeah. You know, the Braves lost, and whatever. I had, I was happy with them being where they were at with a game to play to get it. And there was a couple mistakes within the series in game seven, and that's just baseball. But then again, it's like still who, love those guys. There's a great ball. Who club. are we as fans to question anything that they're doing? I mean, I guess I mean, you we, can. You can have an opinion. Yeah, on you it, can question and have an opinion. You sound foolish when you say that they're garbage, trash, yeah. bums. They should never pick. Like they're in the top one percent. Then you go do better. Show me what you can do. You yeah. go in there and hit that ninety-three mile an hour cutter. That literally moves that much. You yeah. may not see it on TV, and that's what people don't understand. His shit was nasty that ninth inning. That first pitch he threw to Phillips moved. It was disgusting. It moved a lot. <clears throat> so, I mean, like, just shut up. <laughs> just watch the game. Be happy for your team. Try to, you know, it's not do or die for you guys. Well, they want to win. They're tired of Giants fans putting it in their face. And I get that. I get that as a fan. Win but- with pride, lose with pride. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, yeah, you you should. You lost. Shouldn't. It's not over with. It's no, it was. It's two two. Mm-hmm. If anything, and they bounced back last night in Game Five, and uh, honestly, went a, a pretty good ball game. Kershaw was was good again. Uh, I saw there was some. It didn't look like everybody was happy. He came out of the game. No, but then I saw. Okay, so um, Jeff Fry posted this. Uh, Gaon. Yeah, Shigao Nation posted. Uh, <clears throat> Dang it, it was uh, their analytics. It was the numbers. So, Yandy Diaz had like a certain amount of at-bats and percentage against Kershaw. So, before the game started, Kershaw was penciled in to go 21 outs or 21 batters. And he went exactly 21 batters. No matter the pitch count or whatever. If he was going good. That's how many batters he was going. It was 21 batters, and he went exactly 21 batters. So the numbers and information that they have of all the innings, all the times Kershaw's faced them, all of whatever, told them that Kershaw shouldn't go three times through the lineup. So that's what they did. They went two times through the lineup or whatever it was, three, three uh, 21 batters. That's, that's all he was getting. And he went 21 batters. And Kershaw didn't look mad. So everybody's mad, but. I mean, Turner Kers- looked irritated. Those guys kind of, as soon as he knew it was done and Robert, he was going to walk away, it, I don't think, they, they only see them turning their backs. I don't know if they're going to look at the bullpen yeah. for the guy running out, but they kind of turned their backs and they look frustrated. They look frustrated. Why not try to let him get, it was five and two thirds innings. Yeah. I think the bases were empty. No, and that's where you go off your feel. Um, and ultimately, they won the game. So you know? it doesn't really matter. I don't think Dave Roberts has done all that bad of a job. I think he's been I, worse I, I still, in the past. I still think Gratterall should have got four innings or got four outs game four in that ninth inning um, just because the race had nothing for him. Not many guys have had anything for that dude. Yeah. That's all. And, you know, Jensen gives up a bomb the night before. Well, maybe that's, and that's two. why he wasn't in there last night. You know, and Trinan was filthy last night, too. Yeah, um, I mean, I saw somebody say Adamus is doo-doo, and it's like, bro, try to a 98-mile-an-hour sinker. Like, he's a big leaguer. Dude, guys strike out all the time. It, we're in an era of the most strikeouts in the history of the game. So, I, and, it's also, and I want to say it might have been Jeff Fry again. Somebody mentioned something about, if strikeouts are okay, look at what look at how good both teams have been with two outs and two strikes. I mean, the Rays yeah. haven't been as good. The Dodgers have been fantastic. Yeah. Well, I mean, all the uh, in game four, all those were scored. If two outs. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, make an adjustment, man. I don't know. I'm just, I just like just. Just watch the game. Enjoy the baseball. No, and some of the fans aren't so bad. I mean, I no, they're not. And there's a lot of people that I know that I've that I and I did see that I've known for years. They're they are Dodger diehards. They're Dodger mm-hmm. fans, and you know, there's some people I don't know if they are or not. But what I'm reading is 
Like, dude, yet if they do win, I'm going to laugh when you're the one celebrating because yeah. I can go back to three days ago and you sound like a Dodger hater. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's a reason the guys are on the on the roster. There's a reason they're put in the situations they are. There are re- there's a reason for everything. You know, back in two months ago when the f- season started, you weren't mad about a loss or, you yeah, know what I mean, right. like about a situation that, you know, Kinley might have given up a uh, – you know, he didn't get every save during the regular season, but you're not mad about it. So, like, it's big league baseball. Both teams are big leaguers. Both teams are really good. Yeah. They're the top 1% of all of the world that can do what they do at that level. Give them some credit. But other than in, in game five last night, you saw uh, Margot get to third, right? Lead off double, I think. Or no, he was a single and got to second. second. Yeah, and then ball in the dirt, I think, to third, third, which was a close play, honestly. They probably could have gotten Or no, stole second, way. the ball went away. Right, and then went and to, got third. to third. That's right, that's right. Uh, and then with nobody out, strikeout, strikeout. With a runner in third. Mm-hmm. Um, he tries to steal home with the runner at first base, which, I mean, I know... There's a few schools that run that play. Um, again, Cash said it wasn't called. He did it on his own. But if I'm a heads-up base runner, the second I see him take off from home at first base, I'm going to. Yeah. Right? Because if anything, I might get a throw to first base. Or a Bach. Or, or a Bach. Right? Because if you go... Now, if- Turner, you can watch the replay, and we have it. We'll watch it. Turner's looking at uh, Margot. Mm-hmm. He's watching him. You can see his eyes on him. But I, I'm just thinking. Well, and Muncie comes off points at Margot. But the thing is, if if Margot takes off and the runner from first takes off, you know, you're in a little. You know, and, and it was a close play. I mean, I don't I didn't have any issues with it. It was the fourth. It was still early. Um, It wasn't a backbreaker. It doesn't <clears throat> ruin or end the game. Um. What was it? I don't even know what the score was there, to be honest. That's right there. 3-2 Three, two. Three, two is a one-run game, right, in the bottom of the fourth. And I don't – look at Kershaw. Slow it down. Does he balk? No, I did. I, I did try to watch that, and he does separate his hands – or he does step off first. Yeah, see? Yeah, he runs it perfect, so. And he doesn't even look at the runner at first base. So I mean it's a good play all around. I, I didn't I didn't mind it at all, and I don't think Cash, he didn't say anything, you know, out of the ordinary. We can hear his comments on it if you want. No, I don't care. Um, <laughs> but no, it wasn't called. He kind of did it on his own. And again, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it. I didn't think there was an issue with it. Well, I mean, I you also had the um, you were talking about the Seeger steal at second. He was freaking out. It was close, man. Bang bang. We can, you know, I mean, we can. He was out. You showed me the replay. He was out. It was, and it was, you know, I mean, it was bang, bang. You can say all you want about, oh, you don't like the Dodgers, blah, blah, blah. I like Seager. It was a great play, but. What about where he was playing in front of the bag? Do you think he should have been closer to the bag receiving that throw to put a tag on? No. No. I mean, I don't think straddling. Like I said, I think if you don't straddle the bag anymore because it takes you up the line. Yeah, you can't. It takes you in the runner. It takes you to that second base side. The ball. I'll tell you this, okay? If the ball was right here, four inches, he's out. Come on, bro. You see it right there. Yeah, he's, he's out. He was called safe. I, I don't know. Yeah, he wasn't. For them, but, it was too close. But if the ball is even two, two to three inches more to this side of the bag, he's out. Right. He's not reaching so far. Yeah. He had saying. to reach across his body right. to catch the ball. No matter where he's standing, the ball's still exactly head high so, to his, to his uh, right. So shoulder. where he's placed in front of the bag like that is where they want him. They teach them to see the ball in and travel. I've just them. heard a lot of comments so far this morning. I, I was listening to, to uh, some power alley on MLB Network. Oh, yeah, and, who are they? Who are they? Are they? Did they? Play? I'm just no. I'm just did saying. They, did those guys play? I don't know who was talking. I'm, I'm about just it. asking. I mean. If you never play at that level, like you, you have I think, no freaking comment I mean, whatsoever. I think Fry, they were talking about it too. I mean, so yeah, I, they used to straddle the bag, and that was taught. We we were taught that straddling the bag, but once I got to 
college and the professional level, you try to get to the ball first. So in order for me to get to the ball first, I have to be right right in front of the bag where I'm seeing the ball because I'm le- I'm also catching with my left hand. And I get being straddled and catch and drop, but you you have that angle where the guy's sliding into me. There's that room for I can get hit. The runner could be there on time and pop up and, and hit the ball away. So they put you right in front of the bag to, you know, get you out of the way. And then you still are looking the ball in and traveling to get the guy out. So I thought he played that like he's supposed to. The throw was just a couple inches off. Yeah, and again, I one, that was a hell of a block by Zanino. But he was still out. So, I mean, in your opinion, in your eyes, your umpire eyes, and that's fine. I'm sure a lot of people thought he was out. Yeah. Uh, but, again, the the one thing that, again, I'm not hearing a lot of people talk about is the fact that these guys are looking for balls in the dirt. How many times do you see a ball in the dirt? And it's like, why didn't that guy get to second base? It yeah. happens a lot in the big leagues. Oh, yeah. These guys are looking for every base they can get, and they're they're doing it. I don't know. See, my question to that is, why does it matter now? Oh, because you're playing for an actual ring? Yeah, and I get that it's, you know, a tough season. We've I've never been yeah, through it. Yeah, no, you're playing, you're tired things but i mean bodies hurting you and people doesn't know people don't know everything that they're dealing with i'm just saying I, I you've the way i've seen some of these guys play like seeger's played out of his mind mm-hmm. the best player on the planet right now uh, a rosarina could yeah, be I, argument. I, yeah i guess i guess that's true 27 hits in the postseason well i mean if the rays were up three two you'd probably be saying rosarina is the best possibly player on the planet, so possibly but i mean you look <laughs> at everything yeah those those two guys right now are are neck and neck that, that, that's fair uh, and then so now we're going game six. Off night tonight. Dodgers are one away. They announced they're going Gonsolin to start. I'm in my brain, and I told you this, and you kind of – you weren't thinking – I actually agreed with you after you explained it. They went lefty, Urias game four. Well, you could just see the way they've had lefties. You should go – Kershaw game five. And, I, I mean, they have Alex Wood. And I thought he's he's a starter. He's been a starter in the past. He's pitched in the postseason. Another lefty. Um, and if he's not, you know, if he's, like, say, who's they going to go to first out of the pin tomorrow? Is, is he, is he, might he be one of them that's a long reliever? May went, what, an inning and two thirds or something last night? I don't know yeah. what he went. So, but, I mean, you have, you have four lefties. McGee's in there. You have McGee, you have, um, Krylak, or oh, I forget. Let me get Yeah, he's that. another one. And then you have Gonzalez. Yeah. Who went last night also. So you have Gonzalez, uh, Corla, or Kolorek or whatever, Adam Klorecki or Klorek. And then McGee's no, on Cor- there. And then, uh, yeah, McGee and Alex Wood. I mean, so you could. I just thought that maybe <clears throat> there's a history of starts there. That's all. Yeah. Well, and plus it seems like the Rays have had a little more trouble with the lefties. Yeah. So. Well, you can you control the running game a little bit and. You know, again, I don't know how big a deal. Not a big deal. It is always a big deal, but how focused that stuff they are at that level. Yeah, but also you might have. Here's the other thing too: is those guys don't throw 95 to 100 miles. No, an they hour. don't. And it, well, he does not all of them. Some do, but Wood like doesn't. Wood doesn't. No. If you want to start, Wood. a little more crafty. But I'm saying is if if he's one of the first guys out of the pen, why not start him then? But is he? That's the thing. We don't know that. Yeah, either. we don't know. Because then you don't know the numbers either. With him. And we've got a Dodger fan that we're going to talk to. Maybe we'll get his thoughts on that. But, yeah, that's what I was thinking. You, you haven't seen Kelly. You didn't see Kelly last night. So, I mean, that I like them saving Bueller for a possible game seven. Um, the Dodgers are in good shape. Yeah, are, is Snell going tomorrow? Yeah, it'll be Snell. And, and, and so, the, I mean, it's going to be a fun game. We could see our game seven. Um. Anything else right now? You want to get some? Get yeah, those? let's get these calls in. We got a Dodger fan going to join us here in a second. And, uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with uh, another fan call with uh, episode 81 of Hit or Die Podcast. All right, we're back here, uh, Hit or Die Podcast, with another phone call. Uh, actually, it's a friend of mine. Hit me up last night on Facebook. But uh, Matt... We'll just go first name here. Uh, definitely a Dodger guy. Matt, thanks for wanting to hit, hop on with us, dude. Yeah, man. Appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, I'll try and I'll change my 
your outlook, Chad's outlook on Dodgers. I think that's everybody's purpose. Everybody that I'm, I'm okay with that. It wants to change your view because everybody that's talked to me about it, that's been realistic, um, has, you know, changed my outlook on it. And maybe it's just your friends that are Dodger fans are actually that, you know, care a little bit more. Yeah. I I talk to these guys on a regular basis about, I guess my Dodger fan friends, they're not really friends. I could tell you that Matt and I, we talk throughout the season. It's not just a postseason thing. So yeah, Yeah, we talk a lot of baseball. Yeah, we do. Uh, so how do you feel? They announced Gonsolin's going to be the starter for game six going up against Snell, kind of basically what they did game two. Yeah. Uh, where are you at on that? How are you feeling about this? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge. I'm a little. I'm, I'm hoping that they can get more than 1.1 innings out of Gonsolin. I don't know if that was Robert's plan the whole time. Um, I was a bit surprised after giving up just a run that they pulled him so quickly. Um, I also wish there's a small part of me that wishes maybe that the Dodgers were still the visitor for this game because if they were able to go out put a couple runs up for Gonsolin, it might help calm him down. I think the guy has the skills. He, he pitched great during the regular season. I think he's just young, and the pressure is getting to him um, a little bit. So if he can give them a little bit more, I'm, I'm pretty confident that so they'll, let, they'll get it done. Let me see how you feel about this. All right. So we were just talking before we, we, we went to the phone here, and my thought was is you got a guy like Wood who's been a starter, been in the postseason and pitched. I think he has like 30 innings in the postseason. He doesn't have electric lights out hammer stuff, um, but he's from the left side, and I thought maybe give that another look. I don't. What do you? How do you feel about that? Um, yeah, I actually figured that he might be a piece of this game because May pitched last um, night. Last night, which May could maybe come in again for an inning somewhere, but putting May in that position, I think, is a bad idea because he didn't really perform last time. But if you remember, Alex Wood. He dealt against Houston in the World Series, right? And um, even when they were supposedly cheating, they couldn't really hit him. So I think his uh, his ability from the left side to, um, with his experience, yeah, I, I think he's going to be in this game. So hopefully, hopefully Gonsolin, Gonsolin goes three, and maybe Wood comes in for a couple after that. I think the I'd thing, like to see it. I think the thing with May too was I was talking to Jake before this. We saw the um, the actual. Kershaw's pitching yesterday. They had him going twenty-one batters, no matter what. That's right. that. That was the plan. So May knew he was in True. after twenty-one batters. So I, Harold Reynolds, and I don't always agree with what Harold Reynolds says, but he said it perfectly. Is May knew when he was coming to the game, so he prepared like a starter. So he actually got to prepare to come to the game. Now, when he came into the game, when with Gonsolin, he probably wasn't prepared as much. And I think May is the type of guy that needs that preparation uh, to come to the game. Um, but yeah, I think Alex Wood, like you, I think Alex Wood would be good. More of the lefties. It seems like the Rays had a little more problems with the lefties. And with you guys having four lefties on on the roster, I mean, it wouldn't be I mean, if you started. I mean, he's not starting, but Wood, Gonzo. Yeah, I mean, you McGee, got you said you I mean, got Kelly that didn't pitch. Gradall didn't pitch last night. Um, there's pieces. McGee hasn't thrown. Um, and I just like how it sets up Bueller for a game seven if needed. Yeah, I definitely I don't want to see a game seven to be honest. I don't think anybody does if you're a Dodger fan. But having having our ace ready, I knew that was the plan the whole time. Once they uh, noted him as a game three starter, that allowed him four days off. So I would feel great having him on the bump for Wednesday if necessary. But if they can get a couple early runs. I like our chances tonight. And Gratterall, is, I think he's got to close tonight. Sorry, I, I'm just Jensen can't be out there anymore. Four, four blown saves in the World Series in his history. I just he can't he can't be the guy in my opinion. Well, and I was telling Chad also, and, and I think it was I don't, I'm getting my games all jacked up. I think it was Game Three. He came in and uh, you know he gave up a home run to Rosarena in the ninth. And like you said, we nobody said anything because the Dodgers won six to two. But you know, and then his you know like well I, he hasn't been awful. I'll say that he hasn't been bad. But I think Gratterall's been lights out. And yeah, he, that's who I would. I like. I I think we talked, and I've told everybody I've talked to about it. I would have liked to seen him try to go get four outs. Absolutely, I think he should have, and that's that's why I text you a little bit. You know, the old Robert splits in, and then Roberts admits to leaving Baez too long. It's like he sometimes has this infatuation 
the Roberts that left Urias in to close the Braves out, that's the Roberts that I think everybody's like, okay, he's finally doing it. And then he kind of like slips back. And I think that's why people get so frustrated on the spot. But I think Roberts has done a pretty good job this time around. Yeah, do you, do you think, and we also talked about this earlier, you know, a lot of people are harping on what the Dodgers are or are not doing, what Roberts is not doing. And not enough people are talking about, hey, maybe the Rays are a pretty good ball club and not giving <laughs> them the credit they're yeah. due. Yeah, it's, it's easy to let that slip out of your mind because you, you feel like the Dodgers are the best team. And, of course, it's easy to critique something when it goes wrong, right? Everybody just bashes, oh, this is the same old problem. But, yeah, the Rays, I mean, me being a Dodgers fan aside, Saturday, while it almost killed me, Saturday was one of the most unreal baseball games I've ever watched. Right. It took me back to that Houston series where it was extra innings, back and forth, um, just a wild ride. So um, the Rays are great, and they're there for a reason. So Yeah, and I think even though – Kinley gave up that blown save or whatever. His stuff was pretty on yeah. that ninth inning. I mean, his cutter was moving like crazy through some four seamers that were good on the outside corner. But Phillips, even though he hasn't hit since October seventh, he's still a big league hitter. And people don't realize, yeah. like, when you see somebody and you know what pitch he has, it's you know you still have to hit it obviously. But I think you guys are right. Gradwell probably should have stayed in there, but. If Kenley came in and got the save, nobody's saying anything. No, I, I agree and with that. I think I think it's, it's so it's hard as a manager when you have the numbers and and stuff that we don't see outside, knowing the the facts and the numbers. It's it's really hard to say who should and should not be in because, like you said, Matt, if you win, then it's he's great. He did the right choices. But if we lose, then people start second guessing stuff. Right. I think it could even be said that. For that homer that Jansen gave up late when they already had a four-run lead or whatever, some people are like, well, maybe he just challenged more because who cares if he gives up a right. solo, yeah, solo as long as he finishes right. the next guy? Yeah. No, and that's true. And that happens. That's true. No, I agree. And that's what I kind of thought about with even Kershaw last night is bases empty, five and two-thirds. Let him go get another one. If he gives up a solo home run, like it's a tight ball game. It would have made it 4-3. You don't want to give up any runs, but a solo home run is not going to kill you. If he gets out of the inning, right. you know, May still fresh. I'm going to start an inning. I know I'm coming in. Uh, it really wouldn't have changed the mindset or, or the dynamic of the game other than if he did give up a solo shot or if a runner gets on, then you go yank him. I don't know. I think I, some people think wanted to comes, see him. But that comes back to the numbers of Yandi having a little right. more ownage on him. Right. And, you know, going into that game plan, Kershaw knew. He knew 21 batters, 21 batters. If, if that, if the information was given as correct, he knew. Because he didn't look mad. And Kershaw's a bulldog. He, You're telling me he wanted to come out? No. You know, no. He, he just had the information given to him, and it made sense. And he gave all the, the best 85 pitches he could give for 21 batters. You know? And Definitely. I think that's the way you have to look at that. You you got eighty five great pitches at twenty one batters and five and two thirds. You know, if that was the game plan, the game plan went perfect. You know, well because he, he could have went he, one and a third and got lit up. You know, it it, it just you never know with baseball. Go I'm ahead, happy man. that he for he for once got to walk off with his head up in the World Series. He did his thing. He did what he was supposed to do, and that's going to be a good story if they end up winning. Yeah, I said it the other night. All I was missing was AJ Ellis. <laughs> hey, I have I do have one question if you guys got time. Yeah, go ahead. And you may have talked to this in the past, but like I'm kind of old school baseball, steel bases, small ball. With these extreme shifts, why don't guys learn to hit the other way or bunt or do anything to get on base, especially in these situations where it's so important? like literally putting four guys in the outfield and no one on the left side, I would bunt every single time, but they don't ever do it. So what we, do you think about that? So we, if you go back, you probably haven't listened to it, but our I think it was 77 with Jeremy Hefner, the pitching coach for the Mets. We asked him the same exact thing you just did. I think know? it was, okay. was it, I think it might've been not recorded though. Might've been after when we talked. Was about it? It, it might've been after. Um, and he said that going off percentages, of okay so if a guy wants to bunt so say jock peterson right let's go with jock he has the chance to hit the ball out every at bat 
Yeah. But, but if he bunts the ball and gets a single, he is now in line for two outs. So they're going off the percentages. So if he gets a single, he's a, he's a potentially two outs right there. Now he's on first base. But if he tries to hit a home run, he could hit one in the gap and get an extra base hit. Now he's in scoring position. He can hit a home run. He could strike out. Now he's only one out. And the next guy comes up, you know. So that's the way he explained it to us because we said the same thing. Why aren't guys learning how to do, you know, hit the ball the other way or or bunt and, you know, have a high batting average? Unless it's a guy like Mookie or somebody that can steal bases and get to the – which you don't see a lot of shifts on those guys. Yeah. You know, if, unless it's one of those guys that can get to second base – by stealing, which doesn't happen very often in this game anymore, then they're willing to take that percentage of a Jock Peterson just getting a bunt single or a ground ball and being on first base. Well, and sometimes they they'll they'll foul it off or it'll be strike you know it'll be strike one or two, and so now they're in a hole in the count too. True, uh, and that he's you know if, and maybe he did talk about it during because he mentioned like we talked about Lemayhu. Yeah, Lemayhu's not a typical leadoff guy, but because he can hit the ball everywhere. They don't shift on him. No, they play, you know, middle. so, and, and like you said, Mookie's one of those guys. But, no, I agree. It gets frustrating sometimes. It's, it's there. Yeah, but it, like he, he explained to us, too, you got a guy that he hit, he hits the ball 5% to the third base side. I'm just thinking a jock. Right. He hits the ball 5% there. Shortstop's 12%, you know, 20% up the middle, and then you got, you know, 30 or something percent. You're going to play those percentages because right. they're taking – Hundreds. You're gonna play the, bats. the the eighty seven percent that says he's gonna pull it versus the twelve percent he's gonna go the other yeah. way. And if he gets and if he's late and he gets a single down the line, you're gonna tip your cap and be like, okay, I'd rather take that uh, that chance of five percent. Yep. So. Yep. Hey, before we let you go, Matt, if the Dodgers win it tomorrow night, or let's say Game Seven, either way, are you going to work the following day? Absolutely, <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 walking in geared up with my hat. I might even have a flag on my truck at that point because my my warehouse is full of SF fans. Oh, okay, so well then you got to go. You got to go. I've I've had to I've had to deal with them winning enough, and I got lots of my brother and lots of friends that are Giant fans. So I've been waiting. I've been waiting since I was nine for this. So yeah, I'll, I'll be at work. Nice, nice. Well, good luck, my friend. Don't. Uh... Don't don't go too crazy tomorrow night watching uh, that game. Hopefully it's – well, not hopefully. We've got the Rays, but uh, we d- do want to see a good game. Hopefully it's not a blowout. Not for sure. So. I appreciate you guys having me on. Love listening and uh, appreciate talk it, soon. All right, brother. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks. Yeah. See? They're not all bad. I I mean, I didn't I don't – I didn't say all of them. Just a <laughs> lot of the ones I know are just – uh yeah i know i hear you i hear you i just like teasing you sometimes uh we're gonna get another one here um our our last one i think actually is gonna not be able to come on with us but uh here we go we'll get another one here for you guys uh joining us now on the podcast is uh former redwood high school baseball coach uh carlin andrews well not only that uh, former redwood stud standout (laughs) And FPU. <laughs> and F- F- I was going to get into the FPU. You know, um, standout, um, Carlin Andrews. You got to give him his due. Yeah, I, oh, I was going. You hey, when you bat over 400, you know, clearly uh, in high school all all the years, then, you know, that's not easy to do. Nobody does that anymore. And then uh, – <laughs> I appreciate it. Things definitely change. <laughs> yeah. The game's changed. Would you got a team in this this fight here in this World Series or no? Personally, no. Um, I'm a Giants fan, so uh, things things have been thin as of late. So uh, definitely, it's fun getting to watch it, though. Um, like I said, the game's changed so much. So just uh, it's funny how all the small things of the game are the things that are costing the teams in big games. <laughs> yeah, we were talking earlier. It's kind of weird to see more guys reading balls in the dirt. You've seen a couple. Yeah, yeah. seen more stealing bases. We've seen a uh, safety squeeze and drag bunts and stealing home, and you've seen a lot of just different things that you know parts of the game that I really enjoy. It's maybe why I, I like watching more college baseball than the pro game. But you're seeing a lot of it here in the postseason. Yeah, no, it, it's something 
I actually, uh, last night in the fourth when, uh, tried to steal, um, home plate, I got a couple of texts from, from players that I work with. And I'm like, what is he doing? He's so stupid, you know? And like, <laughs> I, I personally love it. Um, cause obviously that's something that the Rays are probably, you know, watched, looked at. Um, and they don't realize once obviously his back was to third base, you know, um, and then he has that long where he puts his hands way up in there. Um, uh, he has to step off first. Like there's just a lot of things that he had to do right to be able to get the guy at home. And especially when the Dodgers have had a, a hard time going and playing catch as of late. So, uh, I really didn't mind it. And it, that, that wasn't really the bad play. I mean, you have, first and third, nobody out. And uh, it's just, I think the, the batter be, before, was it Thames or he's Ad, their Adam, Adamus, um, yeah. Yes, Adamus, man. Like, yeah, the whole right side of the infield open. So it's like, and that's another thing that it's like, okay, well, where do you think they're going to pitch you? You know what I mean? I mean, um, just little things, I mean. That that before that the guy before that wouldn't pop up the shortstop with first and third. Um, yeah, I mean if it's um, if it's the eighth inning, I'm probably not yeah. that big a fan of it. But in the fourth in a run one yeah. one run game, yeah, it was three two. You're you're mm-hmm. on third with no outs and it's back to back strikeouts. I mean, yeah, I don't. It was a bang and bang got, play, and you got a lefty up that yes. you know has had some success, but not as much as you know not. You know, like you know, yeah. and a lot of high school teams run that play, like we discussed, before, you know, prior in the show, where that runner at first base, as soon as Margot goes, the runner at first needs to go. Maybe and, try and to draw. Yeah, you know. So I mean, mm-hmm. there's a couple things that didn't happen there, but I agree with you. I don't, I don't think it, it cost them the game. I don't think it. I just thought it was an aggressive play. It didn't work out and move on. Yeah, the, I actually when they when they showed the infield when, um, the. I keep forgetting the, the guy at shortstop, the guy who went and caved with first and third and one out and the whole right side of it. I'm a big fan of the push bunt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like you have a lefty falling off. You know, he's going to be falling off to the third base side a little bit. You, he can literally push bunt it through. I mean, just pass the pitcher and you're going to have first and third again, one out, yeah. and then you score a run. Uh, I mean, and the worst case scenario is like a safety squeeze. <laughs> um, yeah. But just, I don't know, but. I'm a big fan of bunning and all the small ball and just learning to play the game. Well, I think um, that's I think what goes with that is what young what young baseball players need to know is be the player you are. Don't don't try to do something that you don't normally do. Uh, like Adamus, mm-hmm. you're not a home run hitter. You're not really yeah. a gap hitter. Um, try to yeah. figure out a way to manufacture that run. Uh, like you're saying, push bunt, um, just fist the ball to the right side of the field. Uh, you know, anything um, that can get the job done uh, rather yeah. than trying to do too much. And I think that's where these young hitters, they watch the game in the big leagues and they, they think that that's okay. But we're also talking about the 1% that is the best mm-hmm. in the world well, and can do that sometimes. Yeah, no, it's uh... – it's really tough with, with, with the way hitting is gone and what a lot of stuff that is preached. I mean, I personally, that's why I stayed away from that aspect of the game. Cause I personally am not a huge fan with where it's gone. You know, I mean, there's, there's certain guys who, who can do it. I mean, it, it really falls into anything in baseball. There's certain guys you have to play to their strengths and what they're good at, you know, um, not launch angle isn't good for everybody. I mean, uh, <laughs> You have a guy who's 155 pounds, probably not going to work out too good for you. Um, uh, it's the same thing, I guess, working with infield and stuff like that is, I mean, there's certain things that will work for others that won't work for another kid. You know, it's just learning your athletes, learning your players, um, and just being able to play off of what they're good at. No, yeah, I, I agree. I think with uh, – let's go back to infield real quick because you have a, a development academy – in Visalia. Yes, sir. And um, we were talking about the steal by Seeger that was bang, bang. And um, I actually saw the oh. replay. I think he was out. 
But we were talking about how Adamus was in front of the bag um, compared to straddling or behind the bag. Where do you, as a, mm-hmm. uh, as an infield guru, I guess, or the teacher of infield, uh, <laughs> what do you think about his placement and uh, that play? I'm personally a big in front of the bag guy because if you're straddling the bag, you are stuck with where you're at. Um, when you're in front of the bag, you have the lane. It pretty much goes and creates a lane. So if the throw's not on, um, is on target, you know, you, you have that lane in between first and second to move up and down. That's inside the, that's inside, uh, the baseline. Um, and then it, it's really like the guy I like to watch with tags is Javier, uh, bias. Yes. El Mago. Baez, Baez is a freaking wizard, dude. It's, just, it's so fun to watch. And I, and then I guess that can go and play back to he's a 1%, you know, but, um, learning to let the ball travel because the ball travels quicker than your glove, um, type of thing. Um, and actually, Seeger, there's a, there, it was, uh, was the night before that? Seeger was at second and he was in front of that as well. And, and that's, it's just learning all the different things as the game has changed so much, even in sense of infield where there's things where it's like, never do this. And now it's like, this is what's being done, you know, um, type of thing. Um, well, I think on that play, if he's, and I've heard, I've seen a couple guys say straddle the bag, and I guess it's just a difference of opinion, but I think if he's, if he's straddling the bag where that ball's thrown, it's still right side shoulder. So he's, mm-hmm. now he's waiting that much longer. He still has to go the same distance to make a tag. Yeah. Whereas if he's yeah. in front of the bag, it's just a matter of being quick to making your tag. I don't think the the distance that your glove travels is that much different, and he might even look well, more safe. No. Yeah, I think it's more of a matter of being able to move your body and adjust if the throw isn't on target. Um, is it, more of why being in front of the bag. Well, yeah, you can body up a ball too. You can you can chest up yeah. a ball if you need to. Yeah, no, it, it was crazy uh, when was it Taylor the night before in center, and then uh, kind of thing the same thing went and happened to him at second base in the fourth inning. I was like, right. man, just secure the baseball, <laughs> secure <laughs> the baseball. It's really important. <laughs> um, but obviously, uh, it happens at every level which is i mean obviously you don't want to see the ball thrown around but it kind of shows that if you know even the best in the world you know the best in the world go and do it as well so yeah they're human yep yes exactly, exactly and that's forgotten a lot they're not robots um yeah. carlin what where can they where can people go find the, the fielding academy um ida.com um it's, it's, it's something that I started up, it, you know, I, I did it for fun, um, in the summers, uh, now it's become something I, I stopped my teaching. I was teaching, uh, at, at the high school for two, three years. Um, and then I, I actually bought half an acre, um, in Visalia and built a little place in the back where you get some infield work in. And it's, I, I knew that it would, I knew that it would go well. Um, just because I, I had done stuff in the summers for about three, four years. Uh, it's just, you know, something that's my passion. Um, it's just something. And, and, and that's the fun thing about this game and how it is starting to change. Like, you, you're always learning, you know. Um, there, there's, there's always so much to learn. And then getting to work with other guys. Not, uh, I coach at the high school level for eight years already weird to say weird to think it's been eight years already and um even then at the high school you know you you go and have kids come in as freshmen and, and as much baseball as they play they just they just don't know the game you know i mean and it's it, it, it's not their fault you know i mean it's it's the stuff it's the small things that you expect them when they come not so like oh they're going to know how to do this they should know how to do this but they don't so um, I guess I wanted to get this going to where kids go into the freshman year or, you know, eighth grade or seventh grade, and they actually have a, a clue of what's going on, like what a PFP is, you know. Right. Um, 
I can't tell you the amount of kids that come in to high school that you say, all right, we're going to work on PSPs. And then they look at you like, what are you talking about? I mean, it just falls in the gap knowing where to go. You know, they, they play so much baseball nowadays that I don't think there's enough time spent on working on the game, learning the game, developing them themselves, their minds, their bodies. Um, which, I mean, I played a ton of baseball as well when I was their age um, in travel ball and stuff. Um, but I guess it's just trying to find that balance, you know, to where um, it's not too heavily on one side of it. Um, and, and using a travel ball to be like, that's like, that is the time to learn the game. And um, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure that coaches are teaching it as well, but I guess it's just really – drilling it into them to where uh, when they go into high school, they, they're set up to do well and succeed and compete um, instead of having to learn everything as they go. No, I agree yeah. with that for sure. No, and uh, definitely uh, go check it out. Infield Development Academy. Um, Colin, man, thanks for hitting us up, dude. And then, well, before you go, you I want to know, I wanna know uh, who you got game six and, or game seven. Who's winning it all. Oh, he's going raise. Mm. Ah. You never know. <laughs> As a Giants I mean, fan, can you actually? I have do to it? go raid. <laughs> I I know. I can't. You know, and and it's it's and obviously it's not the players' fault, but it's a sixty game year, man. I mean, it's like it's it's like a college year. You know, it's like sixty games is a third of the season. That'd be like at, um football playing seven weeks and going into playoffs. So it's uh. It is definitely tough. I, I, I'm going to say the Rays and seven, but uh, that is strictly off of uh, bias. my bias. Yeah, so. <laughs> hey, that's all right. That's all right. At least you admit it. A lot of I keep telling some but, people hey, that the it's – The Dodgers like, are good, though, man. No, but, yeah, absolutely. Would you, be, would you be happy for Kershaw at least? I am a Seager and Kershaw fan for sure. They 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 both play the game right and play it. And play it. So, I mean – like Kershaw's great is probably the best pitcher in the last what like twelve years, ten years. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's been doing it for a long time and it yeah, I guess I wouldn't be too mad if they won. Uh it would it would be cool to see him get a ring. Well, as a Giants fan, so. you could just say it doesn't matter anyways. It was only eighty games yeah. total. That's what I keep telling right. people. <laughs> I keep seeing uh it's been thirty thirty two years and I keep now thirty one and a half, really. It's not a full thirty two, yeah. but well it's funny because there's a lot of kids that come out here that are Dodger fans and they're like, You guys haven't done anything lately and I'm thinking, Man, we no matter how you look at it, we still won three in, in the past ten years. So <laughs> I'm looking well, and three and five off, off so of those gotta... three. Yeah, three and five. Yeah, exactly. Not a lot of impressive. people have done three and five either. So. Yeah, no, it, it was. Uh, so those were the good old days. Now we're far from them. So nah, they'll get back to it. They'll get back to it. Probably not. Hopefully, <laughs> I was actually shocked that they did as well as they did with it, the team that they had because uh, I didn't know half the guys on the team. You know, it was like it was like a minor league team. But hey, they competed though. Yeah, so. it came down to the last game of the season. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not going to get into that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. Definitely Thank you go, for me, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, definitely go check out uh, Infield Development Academy. And uh, Carlin, thanks for joining us, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. You too. You too. Yeah, I at least he admitted his bias too. I yeah, love it. We're, getting, we're getting some honesty out of people. It's been good. Uh, if listen, if uh, we had one, we never, we never. Uh, he never can get back to yeah, us. Yeah, we didn't get back to he can get back to us, so we're not gonna go uh go that one today. But uh if you want to join us when we post these, please hit us up. Uh you don't have to be uh be a friend of mine, a friend of Chad's, a fan of the show, uh a, a guest of the show before. We do, it does not matter. We're welcome anybody in uh to come talk some baseball with us if we do this again. So uh Which uh, we'll probably do after the World Series. Yeah, probably yeah, we'll, one, one more. Yeah, we'll break it down after. But uh game six tomorrow night. Uh, or tonight, because this will be out tomorrow. Uh, it's Monday, so yeah, it'll be out Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday morning. Yeah. Um, our next guest will be uh, next Monday, coming out next Monday. And then we got two pretty big ones the following week, and uh, we'll just keep keep on going. Again, 
thank you to everybody that's been listening and, and all over the place. It's pretty crazy. It's really awesome to see uh, how far spread this thing's got. Uh, we're, we're, we're excited. And, and just thanks thanks to everybody who's listening. Uh, we will, we'll be back next. I think Monday will be the next one. So if we won't see you. Happy Halloween. Be safe. That's episode 81. Hit or die podcast. Hit or die.